We're in. We're on. We're live. <laughs> good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whatever time you're watching this, thank you for joining us for our latest Sylvia Findings live stream presentation thing. Okay, we've been doing every Wednesday morning, uh, ten thirty a.m. Pacific time. My hair is not cooperating today. <laughs> uh, um. Yes, we do this every Wednesday morning. We uh, uh, have been on an odyssey for the past uh, more than a year, like 70-something episodes, so 70 weeks. Uh, 72? 70 something, Whatever it is. It'll say in the title somewhere, <laughs> wherever, if you're watching this on YouTube after the fact. If you're watching this live on um, Facebook Live... Which, uh, as of right now, looks like there are two people. I have a little number two right here in the corner. Probably doesn't show up on uh, the screen. So, at least two people are watching. Uh, probably both are um, <laughs> Sylvia Findings employees. Um, but, that's okay. I'm okay with the live stream not happening. Uh, uh, live to think. Normally we get a couple of people who drop in. You know, some people sometimes. Oh, see, one person's already left. <laughs> It's like, man, eh, never mind. Um, <laughs> but that's okay because uh, we're just continuing with our odyssey of um, cataloging all of our items. We've done pendants, we've done rings, we've done uh, uh, earrings, ear wires, ear posts, ear pads, all kinds of uh, earring findings. And now we're continuing bales. We're most of the way through bales, probably another. Um, uh, we'll probably keep doing bales into the new year, but you know what? Probably by the new time the new year comes around, we'll be uh, we'll be uh, we'll be good. We'll be done with the bales, so we'll have to move on to something else. Um, I know that if you're watching this after the fact, it's me saying that oh, the new year, you know, will be what the thing. It means nothing to you. So we got probably six episodes or so left to go. Uh, before we're done with the veils and then uh, like I said, I don't know what we're gonna do next. We'll just uh, we'll think of something. It'll be good. It'll be cool um, Probably get a little more um, Informational maybe drill down on a couple of specific uh, uh, Items couple of specific uh, techniques maybe for setting, you know uh, Because most stone setting is easy, but sometimes things are tricky but anyway neither here nor there um Shipping everywhere is bad. You know, normally I'm pretty good about uh, hiding my disdain for Canada Post. Not really. Uh, I'm normally pretty good at expressing my angst with uh, how bad they are. And uh, so I'm not going to go any further than that. It's bad. Um, I still get stuck on the fact that we ship a package to the next province over, we're in uh, Vancouver, literally, you know, Richmond is right across the uh, uh, river from, uh, I mean, we're there. We're like right next to Vancouver, basically. We're, Richmond is where the Vancouver airport is, in case you need some geographical reference. So, you know, we're a major industrial, you know, <laughs> third biggest city in the country. Uh, and we shipped a package from here to Edmonton, which is the next province over in Alberta. Uh, it was a suburb of Edmonton, to be fair. It wasn't like downtown Edmonton. But Edmonton is what, like the fifth biggest city in the country? Maybe sixth? Sorry, I'm sure there's a maritime city somewhere that's... <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. But, you know, one of the ten biggest cities for sure in the country. And to get from here to there... Um, took uh, 14 days for 14 days I I actually had a post uh, a parcel that we shipped from here to the Netherlands that only took 11 days so uh, once you get it out of the hands of Canada Post your parcel is smooth sailing although uh, things are getting uh, long again in the, in the US uh, and this is not uh, election shenanigans going on where people messing with the mail uh, this is just straight up because of uh, um, volume, I think. Just volume. Uh, I know that 
people who are ordering custom stuff, boy, you got to you got to get if you have custom ideas, you know, that you want to have before Christmas, you got to get those orders in now, now, soon, soon. Um, we had a, a shipment that left our factory um, and then it was stuck. So again, probably half the air cargo freight that comes uh, here or goes around the world, whatever, uh, is in commercial, you know, flights. So, you know, your touristy flights, your business flights, whatever, your regular, you know, KLM or uh, United Airlines or WestJet or whatever, whatever airline it is, you know, they sell the passenger seats and part of the cargo area is allocated for air cargo. Um, they supplement their income that way, you know, that's how they can get away with not having full flights, although I can't remember the last time I was on a flight that wasn't full packed. <laughs> but um, <laughs> to be fair, this was all before the pandemic. I know that since then it's been uh, bad. It's been bad. And this is part of the problem is uh, air freight companies don't have enough of their own planes. You know, uh, I mean, they do have some air capabilities, you know, FedEx, DHL, they all have their own airplanes, but they don't have enough to fill all of the or to, to carry all the cargo all the time so um, stuff comes uh, to the uh, we ship DHL from the factory to our office here in, in Canada so um, it'll leave the factory uh, DHL truck will bring it to the airport it'll go to the DHL uh, depot there at the airport and then uh, it, this goes to Hong Kong and then from Hong Kong It'll sit and it'll wait to get on uh, until it's consolidated into one of those big uh, uh, containers to get onto a flight. Now, there's been such a volume of air cargo and such a dearth of actual commercial flights that our, our latest one um, sat in uh, Hong Kong for 14 days before it got on a flight. And this is you're paying air freight rates, you know, so you expect things to be fast, fast, fast. But no, it sat in the airport for 14 days. Then it came here, it didn't come here, it came to uh, LA, Los Angeles. And then it sat in Los Angeles for four days before it finally cleared customs. And then it's been here, cleared customs, and we're just waiting for them to get it to the office. So this has like been another three days now that we've been waiting. We were expecting it last week. So, uh, if you have custom items and you know that you're waiting for them, you know, they'll be here. You know, I don't know what to say. You know, we, uh, um, you know, we're shipping theoretically the fastest shipping that you can get, you know, with the HL, FedEx, all those kind of air couriers. Uh, they all work on similar schedules. And this is just kind of the problem with the thing. I know that there's a lot of doom and gloom, people talking about <laughs> Uh, the infrastructure of the world uh, collapsing underneath us and logistics chains breaking down and creating havoc all over the world. And, and there's uh, some of that. I don't think it's going to be quite um, <laughs> pandemonium <laughs> the way some people think. But I, you know, I still maintain that sooner or later, somehow between now and Christmas, I'm going to get one of those PS5s. It's going to happen. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, yes, my point was, if you have uh, custom things that you need to order, boy, oh, order them now, the sooner the, the, the better. Like, if you order them, you know, towards the end of November, or beginning of December, it's not going to get here for Christmas. I'm just telling you. Just, I mean, just the reality of the thing is, even if we worked at superhuman speed and got your piece you know, cast and polished and everything and ready to ship within like two or three days of receiving the order, which is technically feasible, but functionally impossible. But even if we were able to do that, it wouldn't get here because of the shipping situation. It's just so bad. Um, and that that's it. That's my rant for today. Uh, as always, if you uh, share this video, uh, <laughs> why you would do that is beyond me. But if you do, uh, let us know and we'll send you one of those uh, little polishing cloths. Hey, where's my little prop polishing cloth? It's not here. Anyway, you know, little green polishing cloths that we uh, have. Oh, here's one, right? Here's a, a used, slightly used one. That uh, the, the beautiful things about these is uh, they're, it's just, a, you know, regular that chamois material, chamois. Um, almost felt, kind of feels like very thin felt, very flexible, but it's infused with a, a, a chemical that uh, breaks down cupric oxides to uh, 
uh, help remove the tarnish from the surface of the materials without uh, damaging. It's not like a an abrasive, right? Like sandpapers or those kind of things. They actually physically remove part of the material from the uh, from the surface of the piece. Uh, and these don't. These just uh, unbind the cupric oxide and help you remove the uh, the tarnish, the cupric oxide. Because right, copper and oxygen binds together. You know, you know what tarnish is. It's the ugly stuff that's on the surface of your uh, silver. Luckily, um, almost all of our pendants and rings and bales are uh, rhodium plated, so you don't have to worry about uh, tarnishing uh, happening very easily. Uh, right? Like, um, you know, Tiffany's. You ever go to Tiffany's? All that beautiful silver jewelry? They don't pull that out of the case and polish it every day. It looks that shiny because it's all rhodium plated, right? All good, you know, silver jewelry is rhodium plated for uh, life uh, to, last, uh, to, to make it last. Anyway, neither here nor there. Let's move on to the bales. Um, yeah, let me just move this around. Our first item, I'm actually gonna pull one of these out of the bag uh, because easier to see with this one it actually works lj260 with a retail price of 1517 and a wholesale price of 949 this is um uh what they call a necklace enhancer or um i think there's that little maker's mark with a 925 on there uh and this has a hinge and that pops open right so you can, uh, this and this is the way it would normally present itself, right? So you can connect this to whatever necklace you're thinking, thing, pop that closed. And this is a little finger thing to pull that open, right? To unlatch that. And then you dangle whatever you want from that. And this dangles from a necklace or thing. So you can attach, uh, I don't know, whatever dangly thing you want, you know, from there. And then you can mix and match. Take this off a necklace, put it on a necklace. Um whenever you want right so you don't this is the basic idea is that you can um you know remove it interchange it so that your piece your pendant piece right that's dangling from this isn't stuck on one necklace you can you know change it mix and match and i've got a couple of those things in this tray that i'm going to show you today but they'll pop up intermittently because um <laughs> just looking at this now there's no rhyme or reason for uh uh, the order that these are put into sort of thing. Our next item is a very traditional bale, little scalloped one. You know, we've got so many different sizes and shapes of this, you know, exact similar bale that it would be nice if one day we could rearrange it to have them all together. So you can see the, the subtle differences between all of them. Because there are differences, even though if you look at one and then you look at another one 10 minutes later, you might think, well, wait a minute, that was just the same thing I saw 10 minutes ago. Uh, but they're not. They're all subtly different. Anyway, this one, LJ218 with a retail price of 322 and a wholesale price of 242 It's just a standard pinch bale with a good uh, six millimeter uh, gap between the two... Um, uh, I don't know. What do you call those things? The flanges? We'll call them flanges. That'll be the new word we'll call them. The little flange on the side where the pin is underneath. Um, right? And uh, again, don't stress about the, the if the pin seems short. Now these these come together, you know, beautifully, you know, together. But even uh, if not, if you have to pull this open and the pins don't meet each other down into the center of your piece. Um, you know, they're a lot more secure than you might want to give them credit for. Um, just because of the function. All well, you know, all the weight, and I, I mentioned this a hundred times, but uh, when this is connected to a piece or when a, a you know, a, a stone or whatever is in here, all of the weight is pulling straight down perpendicular to the plane of the uh, pin. The pin, if it got pulled straight down, the pin would you know, bend theoretically uh, until it reached the other side of the hole and then it would get stuck. And there's no way to pull these apart, right? Uh, kind of thing. So I know some people feel like, well, if it doesn't go all the way through, it's not secure. And I don't know, that's really not true. Anyway, neither here nor there. Our next item, LJ644 with a retail price of 1014 and a wholesale price of 735. 
And this is another one of those, uh, let me just pull this open, right? Another one of those uh, necklace enhancer things. This one has a loop down at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. So it would hang from your necklace like this. It's got a cute little uh, flourish kind of effect in the front. Very cute. Little uh, loop. And then this pulls open. Doing. It's got a little ball and loop uh, snap closure, which are quite sturdy, you know. Yes, uh, it is sterling silver, and eventually this will um, stretch open a little bit. But I don't know if you can see, there's a little notch cut into both sides on the either side of the loop. That gives it a little bit of flexibility when it's opening and closing, so that when you snap it closed, uh, you know, it pushes back closed. But if it ever did get loose, all you would have to do is just grab this with a pair of pliers and just give it a little pinch there, preferably like a nylon jaw pliers or um, something. Uh, and then it, you know, would be like new. So, silver is a great material for jewelry making. It, you know, it's really, um, it's not super dense like gold is, so it's not really super hard to work with. Um, I don't know. It's very flexible, very resilient. If you alloy it with a little bit of copper, which is what sterling silver is. Sterling silver is 92.5% silver and 7.5% copper, or ostensibly 7.5% copper. Some people have different proprietary ratios of copper and zinc, maybe, inside, um, you know, different things. Um, but as long as it's 92... Or if, you, if you've ever seen, like, those um, quote-unquote uh, tarnish-resistant sterling alloys, right? They call them uh, germanium or... Uh, uh, I can't remember. There's a couple of different, you know, versions of it. Um... But basically, there's still 92.5% silver, and the other 7.5% is, you know, different proprietary ratios of uh, uh, copper and germanium, or germanium and zinc. Uh, and the germanium in those alloys uh, creates a, a less attractive place for the oxygen to go to. Um, so they don't bind very easily with uh, oxygen, which is what creates the cupric oxide out of the tarnish. Um, Whereas traditional sterling silver, which is 92.5 silver and about 7.5% copper, which is what our sterling is, um, and the copper content loves oxygen, and that's what makes tarnish. That's why we rhodium plate all these things. So rhodium is very, very oxygen resistant, so it'll last, you know, years and years, uh, looking beautiful and shiny and silver and, and tarnish free. Anyway... Neither here nor there. A little science for you today, this morning. Uh, here's another uh, beautiful pinch bale with a nice big box uh, bale up at the top there. With some cute little elements. That's a pretty wide piece, so I don't know, probably a, you know, four millimeter wide clasp can go through there very easily. Although it's probably the other end that you're worried about getting through there. Um, dangling from a very... Oh, let me get this straight. There you go. Dangling from a very traditional um, chevron style pinch bale. Very gorgeous. Here's a, um, another, maybe, should I pull one out of the thing? I should pull one out of the bag because it's, uh, it's a leafy thing. And this is one of those bales that, uh, the whole piece goes over the, uh, um, goes over your stone, right? So it's all one piece kind of folded over. So if your piece, uh, you know, fills all the way up there, I mean, that's no good because then there's no room for the chain. So you need to have a little bit of a gap between the uh, edge of the hole and the edge of your piece and the pin, right? Nice big wide pin. Now, clearly this pin, you, you wouldn't need that to be quite so long. So you'd probably cut those down. So it's a little bit longer. Anyway, beautiful, cute little leaf um, pattern on the front. Can't go wrong. That is um, LJ344 with a retail price of $9.45 and a wholesale price of $5.92. And our next item, L whoops, that popped right off. LJ768 with a retail price of $11.95 and a wholesale price of $7.96. Now this one is another one of those hinged, you know, things with a little snap 
uh, lock. Oops, I'm out of the frame there. So that's what it looks like from the front, right? Just a very simple bale uh, with the hinge at the top and the loop down at the bottom. And then that opens up so you can take this off and, you know, connect it to other necklaces or whatever. So whatever you have dangling from this, you can use on multiple different pieces. I think that's kind of the point of that that whole concept of uh, of a bale, right? Very cute. Can't go wrong. That's, that's a pretty thick one, too. It's really good size. So uh, what did I say this one? LJ768 with a retail price of $11.95 and a wholesale price of $7.96. And uh, <laughs> you need to put that back on the card. Uh, here's our next item. Nice big wide. Uh, this is a different kind of bale. This is the one where the, the pin goes through the loop in the back, right? And creates that pattern on the front. So this is a really good versatile, um, you know, bale. If you have something that uh, maybe the uh, edge of the stone would go up to, oops, I'm way out of the frame here. Maybe the edge of the uh, stone will go up that high. So there's lots of room above that, right? Um, for the chain to go through, it's really good. Kind of elegant too. I love that pierced, um, not really filigree-ish, but that pierced pattern effect on the front of that. Our next item is a nice big wide uh, bale. Similar uh, uh, concept, right? It's all one piece, right? Pinch bale, although it's pinch bale where the, the, the pins are on both sides of the flange, right? We said we were going to call this the flange. These flanges are, uh, <laughs> I know that's not the name. I'm just making it up, right? Because people just make up names in jewelry. Have you noticed that? My favorite is stones. People make up names for stones that just, okay, yeah, whatever works. Um, so we've got this lovely just leaf shape. This is uh, LJ633 with a retail price of fourteen forty seven and a wholesale price of nine oh five. And this is a nice big thick wide piece. You can get a, I don't know, eight millimeter wide, you know, stone through there. Easy. Here we have another um, necklace enhancer type thing. And they're called necklace enhancer, really, but, well, I guess you're enhancing the necklace. The point is that you can remove this, uh, you know, whatever is dangling from here, remove this and connect it to a different necklace as you want. You know, so you can have one pendant that you wear every day with 10 different necklaces, you know, uh, or whatever. Uh, anyway, there's an open loop here. I pulled this open a little bit so you can see that it's open, but this just closed this beautifully. Uh, this has got that hinge and that little ball and loop opening again. Again, it's got that little notch there. Very easy to tighten if you need to, if it gets loose after a couple of years of heavy use. Um, I don't know. Can't go wrong. LJ884. With a retail price of seven fifty nine and a wholesale price of four fifty five. Our next item is LJ two oh eight with a retail price of eight forty and a wholesale price of six thirty one. This is another nice big wide uh, pinch bail. It's all one piece, right? So. You know, you wouldn't want the hole to be exactly the distance from the pin to the top of that thing away from each other. You'd need to leave a little bit of a gap so there's room for the chain to get through there. Um, but again, I just love that that beautiful split or uh, pierced thing. It's like a little flower motif in the top there. Nice wide open back, right? Makes it nice and light. But super effective at holding your stones in there. Again, LJ208, 840 is the retail price, and 631 is the wholesale price. Now, here's one that's just not a pinch bale. It's just a bale bale, right? Uh, it's a triangular bale with that, uh, you know, uh, um, what do you call that? That faux, I guess, Bali granulation effects in the front there. It's got some little twisty wire effects, like filigree effects, uh, right? Although this is cast, this is not granulation. It's just kind of faux granulation, right? 
uh, nice big wide. This is actually uh, a little less wide than the thing looks. No, nope, that's it. That's a, you know probably uh, three or four millimeters wide. You know, six millimeters deep. So depending on the shape of your uh, chain, you could pretty easily get that through there. Um, you know, your cording material will go through that way, and then you just dangle whatever you want from there. It always hangs upside down on the uh, on the display card, right? But <laughs> this is the orientation that you would see it. And this is LJ900, LJ900, with a retail price of 464 and a retail or wholesale price of 290 and did I say that right? I think I said that backwards. Anyway, wholesale retail price is four sixty four. Wholesale two ninety. Our next item, I love this one, is uh, LJ two sixty six with a retail price of nineteen ninety six and a wholesale price of twelve forty seven. This is another hinged one, right? This is a regular uh, bale with a bunch of cubic zirconias in the front. Just gorgeous, right? And that opens up, doink, into a lovely little, you know, opening. So you can, uh, again, take this, um, you know, if you have a, it would require something with a pretty big sized loop, you know, to be dangling from this. Or, uh, you know, because it's almost like, um, you could use this two ways. I guess you could also just cut the bale off and then turn this around to have your stringing material go through there and dangle whatever you want through that. Uh, or dangle something from here, you know. Very versatile. There's no uh, stopping the creative juices from flowing once you start playing with these kind of things. Uh, I just love it. Here, our next one, LJ638, with a retail price of $9.33 and a wholesale price of five sixty. This is a nice, big, chunky, um, you know, rounded... Um, Right, pretty thick, pretty good size, pretty hefty, um, regular old bale, right, with a loop down at the bottom. So your stringy material will go through there, and then we'll just dangle down in that. There's something about, uh, I don't know, I mean, the thin ones are cool because they're, they're less expensive, but there's something about nice, substantial, beefy um, bales that I just find them way, I don't know, I find them way more attractive. Uh, personally, but that's just me. Um, LJ six thirty with a retail price of thirteen eighty seven and a wholesale price of eight sixty seven, and uh, this one is super popular. Although hey, it's not really my style, but uh, boy, we do sell a ton of these. It's a simple pinch bale. Obviously, the pinches you could, would cut those down, right? You probably don't need them to be quite so large, but it's probably really popular because it's just a very simple kind of organic uh, looking front. Um, and it's nice and wide at the top, so you can get whatever you want through there. It can hide, um, you know, chips around the hole if you have, you know, that. Um, I don't know. It's just really super popular because probably because it's not very expensive either. Retail price is thirteen eighty seven, and a wholesale price is eight sixty seven per c per piece. Uh, uh, LJ six three zero, lovely simple pinch bale. Yeah, how can you go wrong with that? It's very cute. It looks kind of, um, I don't know, veiny, almost. <laughs> like the veins in a leaf. Right? Am I reading too much into that? Maybe I am. I don't know. People have different impressions about what things are. This is, uh, uh, should I pull this off? Oh, I should pull one out of the bag. Because it's going to be hard to see what it is. Because the, it's always upside down on these uh, cards. But this is just a simple... Um, triangular kind of bale, right? The triangle bale. Uh, but it's nice and thick and beefy, very gorgeous, very sturdy, uh, nice big wide opening, right? Uh, LJ635 with a retail price of $758 and a wholesale price of $488. Uh, right, so this is not open, so uh, if you're using this, uh, constructing this in a piece, you'd have to, um, suppose you're making a pendant, right? The loop that you're connecting the from here to the pendant, you would have to connect through there first, right? String it through that and then um, solder your ring, the opening in the ring directly to the pendant or something, right? Uh, but I just, again, I just love that. Something about that um, 
the beefier bales. You know, I think it is because all the years that I did my own fabrication of those kind of bales, you know, you're using uh, sheet metal and uh, it's rare that, you know, you're willing to go through uh, the nightmare of bending over something like that. It's like probably 16 gauge, right? If you were to measure the thickness, maybe 1.4 millimeters, maybe one, I don't know, 1, 1.2, 1.4, something like that. So 16 gauge or so. Folding that around into a little tiny piece. What a pain in... The next item, LJ, <laughs> is at 640. 640 with a retail price of 1439 and a wholesale price of 978. Uh, again, this is upside down in the uh, piece just because that's the way they dangle. But this is the way it would present itself as you were using it. Uh, nice, very stately, I don't know. Uh, bale area nice big wide you know piece in the center section kind of almost art deco looking right with a simple loop down at the bottom again this is um uh nice and chunky uh nice and hefty there's a lot of heft to that there's a lot of uh uh we'll call it uh, object permanence lj 640 with a retail price of 1439 and a wholesale price of 978 and uh, here's another upside down look at it. Sorry. Yeah. Doesn't want to sit straight. Here we have LJ247 with a retail price of 772 and a wholesale price of 566. And uh, it's just a simple um, this is one of those, it's a pin through the back bail, right? So there's a hole out the back that the, uh, you can see that, that the pin goes through. This is bent down to give room for the uh, display. And it's got a lovely, um, simple horseshoe shaped bail, split, uh, V split bail with the rows of cubic zirconias in there. So, um. Um, some people might want to call this like a rabbit ear bale, except that there is a piece, um, you know, across the top. So it's not really like a split rabbit, rabbit ear split bale. Um, those are normally not together. They're separate. LJ984 with a retail price of four sixteen and a wholesale price of $2.60. Uh, and again, very simple, you know, scalloped flanges on this bale this is a pin that goes right through there's that hole on the back of the other flange right? and this just has a loop on the top instead of a triangular bale but hard to go wrong it's kind of cool kind of simple kind of gorgeous lj 984 with a retail price of 416 and a wholesale price of two dollars and sixty cents come on how can you go wrong with that the answer is you can't. Now these next two, um, I don't, I don't know. They're, I think they're, they're like identical, almost identical. They're not exactly identical, but they're so close. Uh, the first one, LJ six twenty nine, with a retail price of eleven ninety seven and a wholesale price of seven oh three. It's just a simple leaf bale, right? That uh, it's connected at the top, right? So this hinge is open from there. So you probably couldn't get anything thicker than like a six millimeter uh, thick piece in there. And the two bins, of course, are like way too long. So you'd have to cut those down uh, depending on how thick your piece is, right? To get that to go. But nice, big, chunky piece. I love the texture, right? Inside the little dimples, inside the, the veins of the leaf. And, uh, you know, it's just smooth on the back and that texture on the front. Now, the other one is, right, it's almost exactly the same size. The uh, veins are just a little bit different. I don't know uh, why you would prefer one over the other. You know, they both work pretty much the same. These ones have already been <laughs> cut down for you, so the pinches are a little more reasonable. 
um, maybe it's a little thinner, maybe four millimeters thick would be the best uh, to go in that. Anyway, this one, LJ955 with a retail price of nine eighty three dollars and a wholesale price of $6.14. So it's a little bit less expensive, a little uh, lighter. Um, I guess, I don't know. But the design is pretty close to the same. Again, we'll call them spiritual cousins. Um, this one's just a little bit pared down version of it uh, for a little bit thinner uh, pieces. Our next item, LJ two or seven twenty seven. Sorry, LJ seven twenty seven, with a retail price of seven thirty seven and a wholesale price of five ninety. And uh, this has some kind of a. It's just a pinch bail, right, with the two pins. And, um, and it looks like olives, right? Olive branches dangling down. That's what I'm going with. Olives or apricots. <laughs> Our next item, and we have two that are right next to each other. And I know that we have a couple more that look just like this. Um, or just slightly altered versions of this in other trays, but we'll get to them another time. LJ714 with a retail price of two eighty three, and a wholesale price of two of sorry one eighty nine. LJ714, and this is just a regular. Um, it's just gorgeous, uh, but regular uh, triangular bale. It's a little bit beefier than a sheet metal one, right? So this is not stamped. These are actually cast. Uh, it's got the two ends come to a nice point there. So, uh, this is perfect if you already have the loop, uh, as part of your uh, piece, because you, you could, you could just put this on, push this closed and solder that, uh, those two ends together and boom, there you go. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and it's, and it's, I don't know, it's just way nicer, way beefier, a little more uh, substantial than uh, the usual kinds of um, solder on bales that you find. I just love it, love it. Oh, and one thing, the, right, so I don't know if you could see, this is a little bit tarnished, right? This is specifically designed to be soldered onto something else, so it's not rhodium plated, that one, uh, unlike most of the others. Now, this one is a pinch bale, right? It's just a very simple, tiny V bale. This is where you want the bale to be there, but you don't want it to be, uh, you know, in your face. Very unobtrusive, very uh, simple, very elegant. LJ680 with a retail price of $4.20. <laughs> or 20. And a retail wholesale price of $2.68. Uh, very simple, elegant pinch bale. Can't go wrong. Um, oh, you know what? I missed one. Well, whatever. We'll come back to it. Here's one LJ1004 with a retail price of ten forty and a wholesale price of six ninety four, and uh, it's just lovely, um, kind of filigree ish. And lots of granulation on there. Very Bali-esque. Um, I don't know. It's a little more flourishy than Bali-esque. So I would say probably more uh, Turkish-inspired. Right? Maybe Moroccan, you know, instead of uh, Bali. It's still that same, same techniques. But anyway. Uh, nice big wide pinch bale, right, with uh, two pins. Uh, probably get something thick, uh, as thick as like six or eight millimeters in there. Can't go wrong. Here is a lovely, gorgeous, um, just a regular tab pinch bale, right? Or the or the pin bale. The pin goes right through the back, uh, the hole in the back. Um, the pinch part is not very big, so. I don't know, probably uh, something up to about four millimeters thick, I think would be the thickest piece you could probably comfortably get that into that, right? And then that dangles from that uh, little four-leaf clover um, pattern, bedecked in cubic zirconias, that kind of um, frame box uh, bale where the chain goes through that gap there. Very lovely. 
very blingy. LJ220 is the SKU. $14.94 is retail price, and $10.66 is the wholesale price. Did we do this last week? $10.66, Battle of Hastings? <laughs> I think there was something else that also had that price. LJ930 with a retail price of $9.52 and a wholesale price of $6.34. Uh, now, at first glance, this just looks like a nice thin, you know, teardrop bale. And, and that is what it is. But this is super versatile, right? Because these um, uh, flanges, or which we're calling them, uh, you can open that up and pull that around something. So you can get something as thin as, you know, three or four millimeters up to as thick as probably six millimeters, maybe eight millimeters thick. That might be pushing it. But you could definitely uh, pull these around um, something, depending on how far away the hole is, right? So that's a pretty good, uh, that, that's probably um, um, 15 millimeters or so, 20 millimeters maybe, from the pins to the top of the throat. Um, so you could definitely get something that's you know, pretty far away. Nice, super versatile all around. Here's another one. Right, with a loop. It's just a plain loop instead of a bale. Nice big horseshoe kind of shape. So a nice big thick piece. This boy, you can get something as thick as, you know, 10 millimeters, maybe 10 millimeters thick uh, in there. Um, yeah. When you need a nice big uh, wide opening. There's the front, right? <laughs> the back has the... Uh, the maker's mark and the 925 stamp on there. But that's the, So that would be the front. Just a nice, plain, smooth, uh, elegant, beautiful little piece with a little um, circle down at the bottom, a little barbell where that holds on. I love it! We're getting close to the end. Oh, I didn't save the blingiest one for the last. Oh, well. LJ780 with a retail price of 14 17.47 at a wholesale price of ten dollars and ninety two cents, and uh, this again just plain simple <clears throat> uh, triangular bale. This is all messed up from being on the display card, but right, regular triangular bale with a loop, and that lovely kind of flourishes and uh, you know little leafy things, uh, right. Just lovely. There's no cubic zirconies in there, although, uh, you know, if you look at it quickly enough, it kind of feels like there, there is some kind of bling. Uh, and you've got that cute little uh, post. So the hole would have to be pretty close to the edges, um, you know, for that to work. Because there's not a lot of space between the pins and the top of that, uh, that bale. So pretty close to the edge, pretty small. Uh, these two edges here you can bend these down if your piece is real thin or just keep them you know up like that depending you know totally up to you you can uh always customize these things here's a lovely chonker lj 250 with a retail price of 23.96 and a wholesale price of 14.98 it's a lovely art deco inspired three flanges uh, or three uh i don't know well what do you call those three scallops maybe not really scallops but we'll call them scallops um in the front and the back has this uh i guess it's interchangeable right you could use uh, either one side for the front and the back and the other side for the back or the front a little uh uh diamond shape with a heart Carved into the bottom half, right? So it's kind of a triangle and a heart, or a diamond that has a heart in it. Very cool. Right. And that's that. So you can use that as the back, um, or you can use that side as the back, or as the front, or the front. Totally up to you. Interchangeable. I love that. Here we have one. That, um, you know what? I, I don't think we have any more of these, but um, LJ362 with a retail price of $5.55 and a wholesale price of $4.07. And um, it's just a, you know, a plain old bale with, 
it's really popular. I'm not sure why because I can't – these look like kind of weird frog hands or something <laughs> that would be grabbing the front of your stone. Uh, or just, I don't know, three cute little clouds, something. I don't know. You see only what you bring with you, right? <laughs> Isn't that what uh, Yoda tells uh, Luke as he's going into the cave there on Dagobah? A little pop culture reference. You see what you take with you. They say the thing LJ362 with a retail price of 555 and a wholesale price of 407 you don't know we sell a ton of things. We also have one that's also very similar, but it actually is a frog, where you can see the little froggy paws and the little froggy face and everything. Um, but that wasn't in the trays today. This is the last one I'm going to show you today. LJ810 with a retail price of $780 and a wholesale price of $488. And uh, again, standard old, um, you know... Um, Triangular bale with a good four millimeters, maybe, uh, opening in the bale. And uh, there's a pinch bale, right? This one is bent a little bit. A couple of leaves uh, with a little uh, berry there. So I don't know, is that holly leaves, maybe? Or, or maybe that's an acorn and those are... Um, I don't know. I'm not a botanist or an arborist. Uh, they're leaves. <laughs> Leaves and berries, right? So you can't go wrong. Very cute, very gorgeous. Um, and considering where the 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 pinch is, right, from the the peg, right, um, this would cover you know parts of the stone. So if you want some kind of leafy things covering the stone or or extending down onto the stone, um, you know, golly, this is your this is your answer. And that's. That's it. That's the last one from today. Um, we did two trays. I know that seemed quick, but um, because we have a bunch of pieces that had been pulled out of these trays because we noticed that there was probably 50 or 60 uh, bales that were mysteriously not on the website. So we've been doing the photography and stuff and we'll get those up on the website. Uh, uh, we'll get the pictures edited and then uh, uh, we'll get those up on the website. Um, you know, when we can, you know, we'll do the best we can, get them up as soon as we can. Um, yeah, because I know it seems like uh, when I look at the number of bales that we have, there's just so many, so many styles, so many things. And, and, uh, you know, and then when they look at the website, and it's, it's always like, Wait, why? Where is this? So how come this is not anyway? Neither here nor there, uh, except to understand that we are working on it. We are always getting stuff up on the website. Um, thankfully, it looks like, uh, or I guess not thankfully, but uh, unfortunately, it looks like um, we're not going to be um, getting much more new stuff before the end of the year. Uh, I imagine after the beginning, because we're just we're just doing the best we can to uh, you know replenish inventory, the things that we're actually out of, and um, and it's swamped with custom stuff. It's so great. We're doing so much custom work these days that we love it. Um, um, and with the pandemic and stuff, it's hard, you know, working with the thing. Is the office open tomorrow? Um, technically, no, because it is a uh, statutory holiday, um, but I'm going to be coming in to process the orders that happen or, overnight, so uh, not really, but yes, yes, but no. If there's an emergency and you need something tomorrow, you know, give us a call. If we're here, you know, we'll answer. We're happy, happy to help you. Uh, if not, remember and stay, right? Right. Uh, yes, statutory holiday. Um, so, technically, no, the office is not really open tomorrow, but um, somebody will be here, at least for part of the day. I know that uh, our shipping agent uh, has uh, holiday hours from 10 to 2, so um, I probably will be here at least until 1.30 or so, 1.45, depending. On, I need to get to them before they close uh, for the day, so to drop off the shipment, so uh, yeah. In the morning, somebody will be here. Um, other than that, uh, I think that's it for today. Uh, we will see you next week, next Wednesday, 10.30 uh, a.m. Pacific, 
and extrapolate it out to wherever you are if you want to see us live, which uh, <laughs> nobody ever does, but uh, that's okay. You can watch us after the fact on YouTube that you do so well. Uh, in the meantime, take care of yourself, uh, take care of the planet, take care of your mental health, and we will see you next week. All right, bye-bye.